I've not seen such bravery. These days, video games are under attack for being violent, mind-numbing, and god knows what else. And looking over the more recent games I've bought, that's a hard statement to argue with. I mean, I can't say that my mind is really being stimulated right now. But that's okay. I've long since passed the age where I've wanted to learn new things. But there was a time that I was willing to play a game that set out to educate me. And at the forefront of these educational games was a company called Humongous Entertainment. After mentioning them in my last video, I was overcome with the urge to play one of these classics. Humongous had a series of recurring characters that appeared in their games, such as Putt-Putt, Freddy Fish, Pajama Sam, and Spy Fox. There was one character, though, that, aside from some spin-off puzzle games, only had one game of his own. Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise. Now I know this sounds like a horribly titled porno starring a large older gentleman, but it's actually an innocent children's game starring a teddy bear named Fatty. <laughs> Fatty Bear belongs to a girl named Kayla. At the beginning of the game, Kayla is going to bed. Good night, Kayla. Good night, Dad. Tomorrow's my birthday, and Mom and Dad did have a big surprise for me. Good night, Fatty Bear. You be good. As we find out later in the game, Kayla's parents are horrible people. More on that later, though. The moment Kayla goes to sleep, Fatty Bear comes to life and says that he wants to make her a big, beautiful birthday cake. This right here is Gretchen, and she wants to make Kayla a happy birthday sign on her bulletin board. Matilda Rabbit here offers to help Fatty out in the kitchen. Then she... uh... That. There's also a clown and a moose on the shelf, but they do absolutely nothing. Oh, and there's also a head of lettuce that you can... decorate. I guess. So, as with pretty much every other point-and-click adventure game I've ever played, I just started randomly clicking on things until something happened. These humongous entertainment games were all really good about making most of the screen clickable, even though most of it doesn't contribute to the actual game. Eventually, I found my way into a closet and... Hip hop Pulled my way up to the top and stole a green bow from a box. I don't know how this is going to help us bake a cake, but alright. There's a door at the end of the hallway here with a hole at the bottom of it. A mouse comes out and drops this key on the floor. Now just look at Fatty's reaction time here. That mouse is too quick for me. You slow, fat fuck. Kayla's bathroom is pretty nice. I mean, ignoring the really weird color of the walls and the fact that there are only two toothbrushes when there are three people living here. What they lack in toothbrushes, though, they make up in laundry chutes. Yeah. Yeah, get in there, you stuffed bastard. Look out below! Hey, I found the garage door opener. Of course you did! Some people keep their garage door opener in their cars. I keep mine in the laundry basket. Now I can get in the garage. You don't say. So the laundry room is separate from the house. And even though Fatty fell down the laundry chute to get there, it doesn't look like there's a room above it. I'm not saying that it doesn't make sense, but... Speaking of not making sense, Kayla has bowling pins set up in her backyard. I mean, I've heard of some people having bowling alleys in their mansions, but just pins set up in the grass? Odd placement aside, it sets up a bowling mini game that reminds me of that candy stand bowling game. Only, like shittier. There's also a garden in the backyard, with nothing much to offer other than a big helping of what the fuck. Okay, a treehouse. That should be innocent enough. Good thing we checked up here, because there are some measuring spoons under the table that we'll need for the cake. Let's take a look in this telescope here. Well, if it isn't my little friend Putt-Putt. I wonder what Putt-Putt's doing on the moon. Bitch, have you played Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon? In another case of why the fuck is this here... Itis, there's a bag of sugar in the garage. I bet that'll be something we need for this cake we're baking. That's all we'll need out here, I'm pretty sure. In the living room of the house, there's a piano that Fatty can get on and play. You know all those loud toys that babies and little kids play with that seem like their only purpose is to annoy everyone else? That's basically what this piano is. It has six different settings, none of which sound like a piano, and they're all annoying. Who the hell thought this was a good idea? So we finally get into the kitchen, and Fatty drops another brilliant observation on us. This looks like the place to bake Kayla's birthday cake. Not a moment after we get in here, Matilda Rabbit shows up. It really makes me wonder where she's been all this time. Nevertheless, she's here to help with the cake. I do believe there are some things in my pocket I need for the cake. I should leave them on the counter. 
Man, Fatty is really big on cluing us into what he's thinking. After checking up on the recipe for the cake, it looks like we're missing out on a good amount of the ingredients. Not to worry though, because the rest of them are easily found in the kitchen. The only thing left to do now is throw all this shit in a bowl and mix it together. I am mixing a birthday cake, a birthday cake, a birthday cake. It is one I soon will bake for Kayla's birthday party. It's a birthday cake, a birthday cake. Matilda puts the cake in the oven for like five seconds and says it's ready to decorate. This is really the last bit of any kind of fun that's left in the game. We can let our imagination soar and design any kind of cake we want to make Kayla's birthday party the best party ever. Well, the cake is done, but the adventure is far from over. Remember when I called Kayla's parents horrible? Exhibit fucking A. Kayla's birthday present is just sitting here on the kitchen floor all nice and- It's alive! They bought her a dog, wrapped it up in a little box, and just left it in the kitchen floor for the night. That is horrible. Goodness gracious. Gretchen tells me that the dog ran off with three of the letters from her sign. I find it a little hard to believe that a dog jumped up and only grabbed three letters from the sign, but... Yeah, okay, whatever. I also have to blow up some balloons for her, because she's apparently so far away from them. I don't see why I have to do everything. You literal son of a bitch! So the last things we have to do are get the letters for the sign and get the dog. The letters are found randomly throughout the house, and they appear in different places each time you play. I found the dog in the kitchen, and I just gave him a bone and he gets right back in the box. Not exactly the smartest dog out there, I guess. After putting the letters back on the happy birthday sign, that's about it. Kayla wakes up to her birthday decorations just in time for her dad to come in and wish her a happy birthday. Then he lets the dog into her room. This is the best birthday I ever had. Thank you, Fatty Bear. Oh, thank you, everybody. That may be the end of the game, but Fatty Bear's birthday surprise does not get off that easily. This game is not good, and it's not because it's a children's game either. Humongous made some great games in their time, and even now, they're pleasant to play through. Classic games like Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo, Freddy Fish 3 The Case of the Stolen Conch Shell, Pajama Sam and No Need to Hide When It's Dark Outside, and Spy Fox and Dry Cereal were some of my favorites, and I've played through some of them recently enough to know that they're at least still worth picking up again for nostalgia's sake alone. They're still charming and entertaining, even though they're much easier now that I'm older. Fatty Bear falls short in that it's so... boring. I had this game as a kid, and I only remember playing through it once or twice before I forgot about it. All of the other humongous point-and-click adventures are set in interesting places, and they have some unique stories. Pajama Sam ventures into the Land of Darkness, Spy Fox is, well, a spy, and Putt-Putt goes all over the fucking place. Fatty Bear takes place in an ugly-ass, boring house at night, and all you're doing is baking a cake and decorating it for some girl's birthday. It's just not that interesting. Fatty Bear just falls short as a character and as a game. This was only Humongous' second game though, and seeing as how he never got a sequel, it appears that they learned their lesson. Humongous Entertainment was a great company back in the day. Today, they're owned by Atari, and as far as re-releasing their games for Wii and Apple devices, they don't really look like they're up to all that much. As far as I'm concerned though, they will live on as a company that made great games for my younger self. Well, thank you for watching my video. Oh, thank you, everybody.